This episode of Linux Action Show is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Use the code Linux and save. Welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 25, Episode 5. My name is Chris. My name is Matt. Hey, Matt. Welcome back to the big show. Hey, I'm back in the studio. Back in the seat. Back in the hot seat. You picked a good one, too. We have oh, yeah. a great show. Big show. Guess what? Huge. Big show today. Big show. We're going to talk about video games, and we've kind of broken this down into a few categories. We're going to give you, in our opinion, some mm. of the best casual games available right now for Linux, some of the best intense hardcore games, nice. and some of the best games that are going to be coming out of Kickstarter that's still a little bit of time left to fund, if you want to get in on that. A little indie action, right on. And it's my intention to answer two questions. We get a couple of questions that come into the show a lot recently. The first one is, hey, now that Steam is out for Linux, mm -hmm. I want to try it out. Mm -hmm. What should I try? So we're going to answer that. Uh, and then also the other question I get is, how do I know what Kickstarter games are going to have Linux support? Uh, and, that, that's a good question. Right? So yeah. uh, we'll give you some resources towards the end of the show to uh, sort of point you in the right direction for future Kickstarters. So even if, even if say, a year down the road you, you're watching this episode, you're still going to be able to go find out what games are cool and relevant right here, right now. We'll leave you the tools to do that. We'll so. give you the tools you can use. And then in the news segment, been a big week. There was funny, there was a Big, big rumor that kicked off at the very beginning of the week coming from the mainstream tech news press. And then uh, later in the week was debunked. Of course, all of it involving Ubuntu, so we'll talk about that. Uh, also, there's uh, some other major stories that are Huge. going on. But first, Matt, in the first segment, it's our picks. Woohoo! And, you know, it's funny because I just heard, like, last night in the chat room, mm -hmm. Ah, Chris, I wish you would just drop the pick segment. I hate the picks. And, you really? Know, really? Well, you know what it is? Is nobody loves the picks until there's a pick that you love, and then you True. love the picks. You, for you that need episode. to have that marriage of. You need to identify yeah, with. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I could. I could see that. So this one sure. isn't one we'll, we'll be getting our hands on right away. But let's start yeah. with our runs Linux pick. Okay? okay. Okay. All right. So check this out. This is from the always innovating folks. We've talked about them before. They used to have this really cool uh, laptop convertible, but they oh, are, yeah. have announced the Mi Cam. It's a revolutionary tiny. I guess you could call it a drone. It's smaller than a Raspberry Pi, and then it has, uh, you know, four pylons that extend yep. out that hold... You know, this is what every adolescent boy wants, is, you know, I'm just saying, because you, you can go and, like, creep on your friends or whatever. I mean, you could have a good time with it, right? Yeah, and, oh, totally. And, and, and if you have pets, I mean, come on, right? And the key totally part terrorism. is, of course, it has this little camera built yeah. in here, so, and it has a wireless chip on it, and the whole the whole main board mm -hmm. has a Cortex-A9 ARM processor nice. on there. It has one gigabyte of memory. It's got a uh, a little module for a, for a, for a micro SD card mm -hmm. on there. Oh, it's got some storage, right on. Yeah, and so this thing is a little full-fledged computer that can fly, it has a camera built into it has wireless mm. uh it's wow. gonna it's gonna do five gigahertz wi-fi Seriously. the cpu will run up to 1.5 gigahertz depending on the config you get and uh wouldn't that be cool like a burning man or something that would be really cool like any kind wow. of outside event that would be a lot of fun wow think about like in future like uh Boy. covering protests during a oh, news yeah. event like you, the, the news agency or the police could send hundreds of these up in the air and swarm and just get or or, photos of or people that are doing the protesting that want to get some uh, unbiased footage that's yeah. not been edited down to you know hopefully that's true with the prices, yeah. you know, low if enough. That can, if you can, if you can, if there's a way to DIY this in some level, I think that would be really cool. You know, there you empower go. the bloggers. There you and go. Uh, made in the U.S. and it's uh, based on uh, Linux and other yeah. open source hardware. And the uh, hardware platform will be open as well. Very cool. Now here's the downside. Okay. Uh, yeah. At best, we're looking at the uh, beginning of 2014. At yeah. in best case scenario, that's not terrible. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not like. I don't know, 20 years in the future. It's not like Sarah Connor or anything like that, right? right. I mean, it's not too terrible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, oh, that's, uh, sorry, I have steam running in the background. Oop, hello. There we I go. got a little uh, <laughs> photo bombing. We got photo bombing. <laughs> nice. So you can tell this, is gonna, this episode will have steam, uh, some steam stuff involved. That's why I have steam running in the background. Now, Matt, uh, just to keep things in the gaming theme this mm -hmm. week, both the Android app pick and the Linux desktop pick right. are, uh, are very game focused. Okay. Very game focused. So I want to talk about those. But before we do, yep. let's say good morning to the fine folks over at GoDaddy.com who Hello. are rocking, rocking the longtime support of the Linux Action Show. Gotta love and, that. And uh, 
See, there's Danica. She's got a new outfit on. And right look on. how serious she's, she's got. She's got rocking the football scene That's there. her game face. She's she's dead serious here. Yeah. Now, look. I know there's been some rumors online about Danica having a new boyfriend. Oh, you know. Come on. Now, I can tell you a thing or two about this situation, but I don't kiss and tell. Let me just tell you, everybody's adults here. And if you think Danica's a one-man girl... I mean, you don't know Danica. Have right. you seen that girl drive? That girl yep. can drive. So look, when you're over at GoDaddy.com and you're shopping, you want to save some money, we have a very special offer that is over at the end of January. Yeah. So take advantage of it right now because only a few days are left. Linux, two ninety five when you check out, gets you a .com for $2.95. Score. Right? So you could still, we still have time to do this. So if I have domains that I want to, oh, that's sweet. Last chance oh, to treat nice. yourself for a $2.95 <laughs> domain. And, and honestly, like you know, Danica... Sure, is this, there's this other person involved in her life now, yeah, so yeah, she's yeah. not going to have as much time to uh, get up on top of the roof, drop down the chimney, break into the right. GoDaddy data center, and steal those dot coms for you guys. But you can only mission impossible so many deals, right? Right. right. I mean, and eventually, yeah. you got to get back to racing cars. Exactly. She's got things to do. And uh, one other offer that's great, if uh, say maybe you want to get yourself a little of that uh, GoDaddy hosting, and you got a project, oh, and you yeah. want to throw it up on a quick WordPress. Uh, see, the great thing about GoDaddy hosting is they also have the ability to deploy common applications like MySQL, oh, yeah. WordPress, Drupal form software and if you so you get a hosting server and then you can go to the hosting control panel and within a few clips clicks you just deploy the entire software suite that you want like a fully up to date WordPress installation and uh, they already have great deals on hosting but if if you want to save a little more or maybe you're doing domain renewals Mm -hmm. or maybe you're getting something that's not a dot com maybe you're purchasing a a dot tv domain use our code go20 off six. That's all one word. Go twenty off six mm-hmm. saves you twenty percent off anything you're getting over at GoDaddy. Great way to bundle things up. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, there was a thread started in our subreddit. It's like post here what you saved using the codes, and yeah. people are like save forty bucks because this oh. guy like has these. There's we have a viewer out there who has like a hundred domains that he renewed, and he just saved wow. himself a ton of money. Oh, so. seriously? Yeah. No kidding. That's yeah. the way to do it too. Let me tell you. Yeah, it was awesome. So thank you to GoDaddy mm-hmm. for supporting the show, and thank you to everybody who visits the links of our sponsors to support the show to let them know you're watching, and everybody uses the codes when they're shopping to save themselves a little bit of money. It's a win-win. Yeah. All right, Matt, I want to tell you about uh, my Android pick this week. Oh, yeah. And uh, there, there's, this isn't like one of those uncovered ones that nobody's ever heard of. Sure. I'm, I'll fun. admit that, but it's definitely fun. Yeah. It's called Temple Run 2. All right. Obviously, there was a Temple Run 1, uh, and it's had over Temple Run, the original one, had over 170 million downloads. So, I mean, we're Whoa. talking very serious game. Seriously. Now, this is sort of an on-rails game, and here, I'm going to play it, so you'll, you'll, you guys will hear a little bit mm-hmm. of it in the background. A little bit of audio. So it's on rails in the sense that you're running, and you know it sort of di- it dictates where you go, and mm-hmm. so you don't worry so much about the navigation as you do uh-huh. about, say, maybe um, you know jumping, running to the turn mm-hmm. side, getting the right coins, and things like that. Right. So it's a, it's a fun one, like if you have a Nexus 7. Yeah, I mean, right. this would work on a phone, too, but if you have one of the new Nexus tablets or something like that, and you want to try like a very... For a game that's going to push the pixels on the screen and you can run around and jump around and yeah, sit back yeah. and have fun. You don't have to worry about weird, clunky, like, retro... Retro controls. Yeah. And all that. Right. And right. it looks like it's, you know, for the screen size, it looks like a phone here or something. Yeah. Very, some, yeah. Something of that size. And it looks like it runs pretty well. Actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just I was, butter smooth. I meant to bring out my Nexus so you could see it. Yeah. It, it, it runs really great. And if from wow. the very beginning, it starts with, like, a, with a cool 3D zoom in animation and you know you can tell right from the beginning it's pushing the pixels well it looks like it's going to keep you engaged the whole time you're playing it which is yeah. really important for me in a game I, I lose interest real quickly so that it's looks a bit like of an adrenaline rush yeah. it's a, it can be a bit of an adrenaline rush um, don't uh, play while you're driving them usually good advice there. well yeah yeah, yeah I, uh, I hate to be a buzzkill but i'm just saying yeah yeah so that's temple run 2 and uh it's free nice so you can just go grab that over at the android play store i like it i'm gonna check that out and uh, why not? Why not? Since we're talking about games, so why oh. not do another gaming-related pick? Let's rock it. Now, are you familiar with Desora? I am. Like a Steam competitor. It's been on the Linux yep. scene a little longer. It's very popular, actually. Yeah. yeah. And they've, got a, they've got a really innovative uh, funding model that's mm-hmm. built into their store. I'll tell you, though. I mm. We've talked about Desora a lot on this show. We've done, we did a gaming episode where it was like only games from Desora, mm-hmm. and we just went through a bunch of great games on Desora. But the problem is... Is the client for Linux crashes a oh, lot? Oh yeah. Like I've had it crash yeah. during downloads. I've had it crash during installations. So it's very distracting, right? I mean, well, and it's it's sort of like I just want to play. Yeah, like, and I it's just it's distracting in the sense that you've the, got your afternoon mapped out. Yeah. And you spend the entire time just trying to get this to stop crashing. And the download has to be restarted yeah, and all that like, kind of on. stuff. Well, as all great things open source, kind of like it reminds me of Chrome and Chromium. Mm-hmm. There's Desorium. I might not be saying that right, but uh, there's Desorium. Right. Good enough for me. And Desorium. 
is an open source clone of the Disorder client. So here, I'll launch it right here. Okay. And uh, we'll fire it up. And I, I could tell you, I was, I haven't played with a lot. The chat room actually told me about this uh, before we went on air because yeah. uh, I was looking for a gaming related pick. And I was kind of bemoaning some of the issues I've had with Desora oh, and how nice. I really think that Steam's client is a step up and a little bit mm -hmm. better instability. Well, they said, well, then, Chris, you've got to check out Desorium. So here it is. This is Desorium for Linux. It is an open source clone, or I guess maybe the open source code branch mm -hmm. of the Desora client with a lot more bug fixes. I can tell you my initial impressions off the top of the bat is performance is a lot better. Would you say client. it is basically, uh, it's the Chromium to Google's Chrome? I think it is. I mean, I yeah. don't know if that's like a really rough... It's, it's, uh, it's you know, but I, spotty, but yeah, it's you know spotty yeah. uh, comparison. But I think it, it seems like it's very stable. Yeah, here's um, my game library, so I can see that. Here's the store. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the performance has been fine. I've played yeah. with it for like 15 minutes before the show went on air too, and I I would say that you know first impressions are really uh, first impressions good. are good. Yeah. yeah, and one thing it's actually gotten better than Steam does on a 64-bit system is mm -hmm. Flash actually works. Oh wow, yeah, no kidding. See that? Yeah. <laughs> that, so, that helps. Yeah, I can actually watch the game preview. And the all, kind of that theater mode is kind of a neat thing that they do, too. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's Desorium, and uh, it is an app store for uh, Linux and Windows and nice. the Macintosh for games. Tons of games on here, lots of free ones, too. So uh, if you, like I have uh, here in my game category... I don't know if I paid. I might. I might have paid for some of these. Probably. But all of these uh, are available for re-download and mm -hmm. reinstall anytime, just like Steam. So it's even if they're free, it's nice to collect them in here because then I just go back to here. I just load them from here every time. Right. The repos on your distro sometimes won't have the latest version of Warsaw or Zenotic, but Desora usually is pretty close to the latest version, so I can get that. It's really easy. Well, and I think what's really cool about this is that if you, you know, you're a Desora fan, but you've had stability issues, this is a great way to access your existing games even and not have yeah. to. You you know, wonder if it's going to give you issues when you just want to play your games. You know? And if you've had issues with Desoria, sure, check out Desoria. Definitely. And because we're going to be talking about Steam a lot today, mm. I thought it'd be good to give them a mention too. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Matt. Now before rocking. we jump down to the news, uh, I wanted to cover a, an answer. I wanted to answer an email that was sent into the show, and okay. um, because I think it's one that we've made it a pick before, but it's been mm. a while, and I've heard people asking. It came from yep. a Re Rebel Child or something like that. Chill. Okay. He says. Uh, I never ran a desktop email client before. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, suddenly I feel very old. I know. I, do too. I, <laughs> it's like, I, I remember what I remember when Hotmail came out. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, Thunderbird, Ice Dove, Claws, uh, Slipe mm. Sheet, etc. Mm -hmm. I've recently had conversations with a Linux admin friend of mine, and he told me I was thinking of running such a client. Mm -hmm. He hated it, in his opinion. Hmm. He said it would be a waste of time and more trouble than it's worth. I'm interested with the Linux Action Show subreddit things. What did last were use and the pros and cons? And then there's 32 responses to his question about what different folks in here use. And sure. It's a great read. And a lot of different uh, interesting insights into how mm -hmm. people kind of use email on their machine. But right. Matt, where do you stand? Are you a desktop email client or are you a webmail guy? In all honesty, I am actually using a specific webmail. But that being said, I if I am going to run a local mail client, I'm probably going to run Thunderbird. And I'm probably going to do so running a separate machine with a pop file uh, Bayesian installation simply because it provides me with more granular control. Wow. For most people, though, Thunderbird has reasonable Bayesian filtering for your spam filtering. Yeah, yeah. And there's something about having a physical backup or data, yeah. you know, database of your files that the cloud's not going to give you. And so uh, that's something to really consider, I think. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I, kind of, I kind of use a mixed approach. Mm -hmm. So I, I use Thunderbird for some things, and I use uh, Webmail for other things. Sure. And then for my personal email, I use an application that I've actually made an app pick before. It's called Geary. And I've been looking at that more and more lately. Geary is a little limited in, in terms of Thunderbird. Like if you sure. compare them, Thunderbird has umpteen more features. Geary yeah. is more straightforward. It doesn't quite, it's not quite as flashy. The thing I like about Geary is I have an unbelievably large inbox mm -hmm. and gary is one of the few actual desktop clients i can throw at it that it doesn't die it doesn't choke right like, i think i've said before on the show like when i load thunderbird up i actually load it up like the night before i need to use it that way it has all night to try to yeah, catch up right. oh yeah okay. and then it's usually still going in the morning <laughs> right. whereas with, with gary uh i i install it and it's immediately available and it, it's wow. a little more like gmail focused yeah it's, it seems like it's like uh threaded you know it, has it does nice do thre threading and it's it's sort of more designed to work specifically with gthread yeah. so some of the concepts in gmail some of the concepts in Gmail webmail sort of work here in Geary, too. So this would make a really nice front end for Gmail on your yeah. desktop, I think, especially yeah. if you're letting Gmail handle all your spam and uh, labeling. Exactly. And that. So Not the like, So I yeah. use Thunderbird as well. I use Geary and I use webmail, kind of depending. Uh, you know, I would say out of all of them, the Gmail web interface is it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's Yeah. I, well, and then, of course, the elephant in the room, evolution. Whoa. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, 
I'm going to say that if you are, and I have not tried it recently, but if you have a compatible Exchange server that you're connecting to for work, it can work can work. yeah yeah um it's good for if you need to do you know, exchange but yeah it, outside of that there's really no compelling reason to do it unless you're doing exchange as far as calendar and all that but otherwise you're better off just doing a thunderbird than integrating calendar into that or something i, I was watching the chat room as you were chatting about yeah. that and you know they seem to be uh pretty pretty thunderbird i, I yeah. mean i would say there's some other uh, evolution in there but, well up though i know that but so. definitely thunderbird seems to be the big concern. yeah it's kind of it's an old sta stable you know and, and the as far as the uh, stability and all that that's that part of it's still being updated because I, I think they stopped actual development yeah development they said that it. but then after they said yeah. that they've released two versions oh did they really okay because yeah. that was know. last i heard about it i, I know. know and they've redid the ui since then uh. they've changed the ui they made it tabbed and i mean uh, I, yeah. who knows yeah. okay cool. uh, all right matt well uh so anyways uh thanks to um Rebel Child, child yeah. for sending that in. If you guys want to submit stories or questions, I keep bringing that screen up. If you want to submit questions or stories, just go over to linuxactionshow.reddit.com and uh, let us know your thoughts. And uh, you can start a thread in there for questions, mm -hmm. for the show feedback, for news stories you want us to cover. You can vote things up and down, leave comments, and all of that kind Easily of stuff. Easily the best place, definitely. And uh, just a quick mention, one way you can help support the Linux Action Show is and keep us going. I don't always mention this every episode, but I want to give it a mention today. Uh, we have uh, links over at jupiterbroadcasting.com at the bottom of our website that if you click those links before you shop at Amazon or Newegg or ThinkGeek or Best Buy, mm -hmm. we get a portion of that shopping session. You can also load a Chrome or Firefox extension that automatically tags your shopping session on those sites, includes other sites we don't have linked down there, and then we update it to support other countries and things like that all the and time. And that's well. how I would do it, because then it's set it and forget it. Yep. Easy. That's a great way to support us and uh, contribute a little something to the network without affecting your budget because you're just doing it on stuff you were already going to buy anyways. And helps keep the lights on. Yep. So thanks to everybody who does that. All right, Matt. Well, let's do the news. Hey, what's new in the news? All right, Matt. Let's start with those rumors that went flying this week. All right. Uh, so Ubuntu considers a huge mm. change that would mm. end the traditional release cycle. This is from Ars oh, Technica. Yeah. And uh, did you uh, did you catch this this week? I did. As a matter of fact, the subject of the article I'm working on is uh, is a what if scenario. Oh yeah. So that should cool. be interesting. But yeah, what I thought was really crazy about this is it really came from Ars Technica and TechCrunch. Like that's those were, wild, right? It's like, yeah. and that's where we're now officially getting like our new Ubuntu news. I and mean, when did this happen? When yeah. did they start, you know, actually know. paying us any lick of attention? Wow. Uh, just a little bit before the Ubuntu phone mm. announcement, I think. Ah. So uh, mm. this came out of a uh, hangout session mm. that was being held with uh, the Ubuntu development team, including. Mm. Uh, 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 people who were involved with the release mm -hmm, process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, see, I think this is actually the downside to the bigger press guys actually covering this yeah. stuff is they just got it all wrong. Right. Uh, they kind of took what she said and kind of misspun it. I mean, she she kind of could have been more clear. But essentially what's actually happening is they're laying down the groundwork so that maybe after they get to the next LTS mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or maybe maybe after 13.04, uh, but likely when they get to the next LTS, they could switch to a rolling release. There's a lot of things right. they have to change internally in the way that they structure things. So I would not even expect to see anything until post-1404. I would say that, yeah. And I would even say, like, well well into 2014 in general. Yeah, it's, um, that's probably where it is. So, uh, and then the idea would be is then, uh, so the in-between long-term support editions mm -hmm, would mm -hmm. be rolling releases. And they would just be pushing stuff out on nearly a daily basis. Right. And then every two years, they cut an LTS. And if you want a stable version that's going to have uh, vendor support with vendor applications and uh, et cetera, et cetera, you use the LTS. Well, it would definitely make your experience a little more cutting edge, especially when it comes to like the latest kernel, you know, things like that, to being, right. able, to, being able to have or, that insertion capability. Or just things like, you know, having the latest VLC True. or, yeah. or yeah. any of that kind of stuff. Definitely. A little more um, bleeding edge. So, uh, how do you think that would have? Do you, I mean, would you be receptive Ooh. to that? Because I'll tell you, my first it, reaction when I read the headline was, uh, "Oh, this is a bad idea." I've seen other distributions do it fairly well. Um, I think that yeah. I, I would, I want them to take their time with it. But I think if they do take their time with it, they really legitimately test it, break it, see where it broke, fix it, then put it out there to the public. I think it's a fantastic idea. Yeah. But and that's uh, the that's the the uh, fine print there. And I'll so. tell you, I think I completely agree with that. Um, when I first read it, I thought this is a horrible idea because mm -hmm. what? So in the behind the scenes right now, as part of the next release, Ubuntu, the, the development team is introducing this this new automated testing process where they're going to say, you know, release Unity builds daily. It goes through right. this sophisticated testing suite that they've been working really hard to build, and comes back and says, all right, this is this is good. This mm -hmm. passes a certain quality check, sure, and it goes out into the repos, right. 
And I thought when I read this headline that they were getting all kind of uh, drunk happy off this new system. Because, you know, <laughs> right, sometimes right. Linux guys and open source guys sometimes get so so impressed by their own systems they can build that mm-hmm. they kind of get carried away. Could happen. And sometimes they focus more on that kind of stuff than yeah. they should. And I kind of thought that's what was happening. But now that I read from, you know, press like OMG Ubuntu who are a little more tuned into what's actually happening in yeah. the Linux scene, now I realize they're just, they're doing everything they should so that when they do switch to a rolling release, if they mm-hmm. do, it's going to actually be pulled off successfully. Right, exactly. And I, I think that's the key thing there. I, I think they can do this. I, I think that, yeah, and I think that's exactly what it is. But I also think that one of the things that's going to potentially happen is how excited do we get when we know there, for, at least for Ubuntu users, how excited do we get when we know there's an, another Ubuntu release coming up? That's a big buildup from a marketing perspective and from just a press perspective. If we yeah. go rolling release, that's going to shift a little. You do lose that. Then yeah. it's going to be more about, oh, hey, a new feature popped in. Sometimes. day before yesterday, I think. You do lose you know, some it, of the steam you know, with it, the it kind of announcement. Tricky. Yeah. 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 It's a, I think that's something they'll have to consider. Also, you, but, can't, you, know. you can't deny the kind of motivational pressure mm-hmm. that a six-month cadence brings totally. to... Uh, I mean, like these shows, right? Like if these shows didn't have to come out every single week, right. they would. you would just have scope creep like nobody's business. Right, <laughs> exactly, right? So there is something to that, too. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt to adapt everything, not just the development, but also the uh, PR and marketing side of it. Yeah, I mean, maybe like bouncing in the chat room is saying maybe you'd have really big PR buildups for the there LTS you know. releases, so maybe you'd be... That could work. Maybe be like fewer and further in between, like big, oh my G, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. Ubuntu, OMG, mm-hmm. and it'd be actually mm-hmm. just more like, oh yeah, yeah. new Ubuntu release. This is really exciting because this is the first one we've had in two years. That's true. You could actually ha- it could actually be a benefit for them. Yeah, Maybe. have a bigger build-up. Build it could happen. Yeah, it could happen. All right. Before we totally shift off the Ubuntu topic, I just related uh, John O'Bacon over on his blog yeah. this week announced uh, that uh, they're looking for community driven core applications hmm. to be created for the Ubuntu phone platform. Okay. Rem- reminder: these are in Qt and QML primarily as oh, yeah. uh, the framework there and. Uh, He's calling for design ideas, and and they're talking all kinds of core apps, calendaring, all kinds of stuff. Wow. Um, you know, and th- I think this is a great way potentially for Canonical to take advantage of the open source community's sure. ability to produce code, and you know yeah. they are in limited in resources, so they don't necessarily have the entire development team they need to create all of this themselves from whole cloth. Uh, but that said, uh, mm-hmm. I I I foresee. Con- I foresee challenges with this approach. I think the biggest challenge is it's going to this. This is, I think, where the rubber is going to have to hit the hit the road. I think this is the point where they're going to have to see some uh, some interest from developers because if they don't, they they may have a problem. But if they do, this could be just awesome and could literally get the same great reception they got when they came out at CES. So it'll be interesting to see where yeah. that transition happens. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not. I'm not too on the fence about it. I think they could surprise us. I think they could do really well here. Who knows? Here's where here's the red flag that I want to raise. Okay. Is I just I want to bring I want to bring us back to where we're at now. So this thing's going to be coming out in 2014. Mhm. Uh that gives I mean the the current major platforms are so well polished, are so sure. well designed. Yeah. Uh, all of the applications have a couple of years of refinement. They'll have another year or so of refinement by the time Ubuntu phone hits. Right applications in the touch environment for a new platform made by amateurs, and I don't mean to be offensive by using that term, but people people who have not been in the industry creating touch applications for mobile devices for years now, mm-hmm. if you're not if that's not on your resume, you might not be in the best position to create apps that are be that are going to be competitive with iOS and Android. I think it depends. I, I would go I would go the other way with it. I say that maybe that because they perhaps instead of doing it for money, they're doing it because they're more passionate about it, they could really surprise us. Um, yeah, you're right. You know, I, I remember when, uh, uh, you know, uh, Firefox first came about, and I saw a talk from one of the people that had helped uh, create Firefox, um, you know, from the Mozilla stuff, you know, all the, back in the day. After, yeah. uh, Blake, what's his face? I can't think of what his last name is. Anyway, um, he was really passionate about the idea, and he wasn't necessarily on his resume, this specifically anyway. I mean, he had other great things on his resume, but he was very passionate about it. So I think potentially – Potentially, skills bundled with passion could, in fact, surprise us. Yeah, and I think the phone needs that because honestly, it looks a little too much like a Windows phone. Well, and if if Canonical, if Canonical gets a good response, they can be picky and choosy about who they let create apps and what they ship. Right? They don't have to ship everything Mm -hmm. sent to them. Mm -hmm. Kind of related to the Ubuntu phone thing is it looks like it's not confirmed yet, but it's a possibility. The first Ubuntu farts farts phones. (laughs) Hello, (laughs) I want to get one of those. (laughs) Freudian there. Yep. The first Ubuntu smartphones will keep things simple and launch without an app store potentially. 
Wow, that could be interesting. Okay, now that's that's very interesting, actually. I, I don't know. You know, this is coming from Engadget. And yeah. It's well, based on an interview they had. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, according to Richard Collins, the product manager at Canonical, uh-huh. here's the quote. Okay. In terms of our first go-to-market product strategy, the intention is not to have an application store full of ready-made applications that are there to download. Mm-hmm. You have a very definite or uh, yeah, definite approach in terms of addressing a very important part of the market where users are primarily interested in being able to use a core set of applications. So are they saying they want to be more minimalist? Is that kind of what I'm get, we're hearing? Yeah, they're, well they're, they're the the first initial batch of phones mm-hmm. are going to target like the low end phone market where right. feature yeah. phones. So maybe they okay. don't maybe the there isn't an expectation of applications. Right, right, right. My mom, my mother-in-law, people that just yeah. want certain fa- Okay. I yeah, mean, I can obviously see that. the sure. reason for this is I mean, they already have a lot of the frameworks they need to do an app store. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they got right. the back-end infrastructure for that, obviously. I think it's probably more about the fact that there won't be apps. Yeah, and this is a, and I got to give them props in the fact that you're addressing the fact and realizing you don't have the applications you might want. So this is a very butter smooth way of saying, you know, we accept that and we're mm-hmm. going to strengthen ourselves because of it. Okay, that's cool. iPhone launched without apps. Yeah, that's true. Uh, of course, that was a completely different. But that was a different... completely, yeah, that's yeah. going from like, yeah. you know, yeah. Windows Mobile and BlackBerry to iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, uh, you know, BlackBerry 10 is going to be launching around the same time or sooner, and it's going to have an app store. Uh, of course, all the other major platforms mm-hmm. will have app stores. And the other thing that I think this might do is put a damper on uh, enthusiasts like you and I from running Ubuntu Phone. I don't think it's going to stop me. But, uh, you know... Um, well, it depends how... I guess it depends how locked to. up it is and whether or not you can yeah. tweak it or yeah. massage it into something you want to use. Can I just yeah. apt get something and just, you know, make it work on a phone? I don't know. I hope so. We'll see. And again, this so. might not even be what happens. This yeah. is all going to depend on when it ships... Right. What uh, what carrier buys it? All that stuff is going to depend. I would say yeah. nothing's really locked. Pretty in. speculatory at this point. Yeah. yeah. All right. Enough with the Ubuntu stuff. Okay. Enough with the phone that. stuff. That's all. Just you know, we're just keeping you. We're keeping tabs keeping on that stuff. Keeping you hip to what's going on. Why don't we talk a little bit about GNOME? The GNOME. So okay. GNOME three point eight is being worked on. So right mm-hmm. now, uh, it kind of reminds you maybe how the kernel does things. GNOME three point seven is in the oven. Okay. And uh, they just hit the midway point. And I just wanted to cover uh, a couple of things that they have uh, that they've brought online mm-hmm. in uh, GNOME three point seven that are worth talking about. Now, uh, there's lots of really great stuff here, but the one that I wanted to talk about is something that I just think every desktop environment needs to have sure. from now on. Now that Gnome's in, in put this in, everybody needs to do this. Allowing you to focus on your task and minimizing interruptions has been an important aspect of Gnome 3 design from the very start. Like that. So, we just added a global switch to turn off notifications. The new notification panel on this allows fine-grained control over which, app, which applications get to annoy you and how much. Oh, and this like is the that. part I like a lot. So you can say... You know, these apps, oh. these apps can use notifications, mm-hmm. these apps can't. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've all got those applications that abuse the notifications yes. that we wish they weren't, right? It reminds me of a smartphone approach. I like that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, they, they, also have a, they, have, they also have a nice easy-to-use privacy mm-hmm. control panel. It's a little minimal, so I'm not really giving it too much mention. Uh, they also have finer-grained controls over what shows up in the search and uh, things like that. I mean, all of these are like these sheet panel style. Uh, so this is very similar to what KDE's been doing for some time. In some ways, yeah. yeah. I, it's probably a little more granular. but um, And I think a little cleaner. Which I mean, is unusual because KDE is known for granular. I mean, they're but, known you, to, but you look at the way they're doing it. It's a little less convoluted. It, it, yeah, it's like it gives you... It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a, gra- a great example of as how known... Home 3 is evolving. They're adding back in power user features, but they're doing it in a way that's not cluttered. It's a little and it, more aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But let's talk about, uh, let's talk, let's maybe scroll down on this list here. They okay. have some information here about the classic mode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, the classic mode, if you remember, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, is going to replace the fallback mode as an alternative for users who want to keep using elements of GNOME 2, such as the minimize button. Right. Crazy. Love it. Or a window list. Crazy. Uh, and uh, classic mode will, uh, it's just GNOME shell with a few extensions and a few setting tweaks. New GNOME features like iBus integration will just work because right. classic mode is literally using the same code. They're just reusing infrastructure for defining modes, the stuff that they already mm. have in place uh, that was already there in the shell. Now, here's what they've decided to do, and tell me what you think of this, man. Okay. To okay. differentiate classic mode from GNOME 2, they're going into a GNOME 2 gray theme with a window list at the bottom, a clock where it's at in GNOME 2, and here it is. Here's the look. Uh, I, you know, it reminds me a lot of cinnamon. You see how the clock yeah. comes down here? It's looking good. A lot of... It's got a lot of gray, but you yeah. can change that. Yeah, but. no, and that's that's fine. And I think anyone choosing that already knows that because yeah. they, they know what they want. They know right. what, so they know they can theme it. Yeah, it definitely has a cinnamon. You can see that beautiful there. minimize button there on the calculator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, it's got uh, some... Uh, 
You yeah. got your you got your open window list there at the bottom of the screen. I'm not hating that. No, actually, that's not bad. This is you know you change the theme up a little bit, mm-hmm. and you've got yourself a, a really you great sex that up. Yeah, you totally could, and there probably will be some themes out there mm-hmm. to do that. I I got to tell you, Matt. That's uh, might be playing with that myself. Actually, that's not. I don't. Ha- I don't hate it. I, I would need to get my, my get my fingers into it to kind of really. There's the application you know. menu there instead of the uh, full yeah. screen thing. You know, it's a little I'm, more like uh, Cinnamon's menu. I'm kind of liking that. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Like no. I said, I, I want to spend a little more time with it before I come to a complete judgment. But and here's the first, uh, first impression's good. Here's the notifications tray, so it slides up, and this is still in this is GNOME three classic mode. Yeah. So this slides up, and you have your different icons down there that want your attention. It's an interesting marriage of new and old. Um, you know, right? It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you I know, wonder how it perform, you know, what the performance difference is between like cinnamon and uh, yeah, that'd yeah. be interesting. I do wonder that too. Yeah. I think it's I, I don't know. It still might require some. Uh, yeah. I think it still requires acceleration. But it I, may. It would stand to reason that if Gnome keeps going in this direction, I'm going to be switching. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, and, I, and the reason why that makes a lot of sense to me is if you just think about it, the Gnome project's sole focus is on making a desktop. They're not, although they're switching it, they're going to start making Gnome OS. I was, actually, maybe I'll take this compliment away, but I was going to say it would make sense that projects that only focus on building a desktop, not things right. like Ubuntu that focus on distros and mobile and Unity and all this others, they have all yeah. of these priorities. Their only priority is the desktop. Of course, with Gnome OS, that's kind of changing. Sure, but sure. I, I think I would probably have to kind of... Uh no, I wouldn't. I use the word benchmark very loosely, but I would need to run both and spend some time with both and really find out where my That's where fair. my gravitational pull is. Uh, to borrow a little sci-fi lingo, there. That's fair, man. Yeah, That's fair. Yeah. You know, but I, I could see myself giving it a very serious look. But I, I'm 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 not always big into switching. I'm a little I'm a little skeptical. Yeah, you stay where you're at. You stay where you're at and just be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, so I'm boring. You know that global menu system? Oh, in that that's their, a global uh, thingy. Yeah, yeah. So I have it right here, right? In uh, Unity, yeah. it's all, they're all my file menus and stuff mm-hmm. are up there at the top of the screen. And the that took a while to grow me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's still working its way. Well, KDE is going to roll out something similar. Oh yeah. In uh, four point ten. So let's talk about little okay. KDE here. All right. Uh, so uh, first of all, there's some other things that are coming. This is there's a lot of things coming in four point ten. But uh, let me scroll down. Here it is, Matt. Here's a screenshot of it. So if you look that's at this bad. screenshot really carefully. They've put a little mm. button up in the title bar there. Really? And you a click, button? Yeah, a tiny little button. And you click that tiny little button, and then out pops your file, Ugh. your edit, all within the title bar of the window. So you're minimizing, you're removing the menu bar, so you're saving, like, you know, 50 right. pixels of space okay. uh, vertically. And you're comp- So, you know what this reminds me of is how Office uh, 2010 does <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's like, And beyond, yeah. Uh, you know, I, y- you guys just keep doing what you do. I, I, I love you for it, but yeah, not so, not so much for myself. I don't know if I dislike it a whole lot, I, but I... I think it needs tweaking still. I, I could use it for myself, but I would never subject anyone to it just because I wouldn't want to try and explain why you hey, have Matt. To, like, Hey, Matt. Click into something. Hey, Matt, I um, heard you like menus, so I put menus in your menus. Yeah. I, oh, God. No kidding, right? Yeah. You, you got to menus for your menus so that your menus have access <laughs> to their menus. I'm just saying. But, you know, it's like all great things in KDE. It's just going to be another option. You don't want it, you don't mm. use it. Yeah, this is true. And right? that's the great thing about desktops. You don't like the desktop, go to another desktop. Unlike it's Unity, where if you don't like it, uh, go F yourself. No. No, you you can, you can PPA and little yeah, cinnamon can, action in there. Can. Yeah, you can, sorry. but there's no there's no blessed. There's setting. no there's no ble- yeah. There's right. no no blessed nothing yeah. going on there. All right, well let's talk about one of my favorite distributions mm-hmm. that's having a big change. You know, one of midlife changes. Uh, Backtrack is being rebuilt as Kali Linux. I, yeah, I, uh, Kali Kali. I wanted to call it Kale Kale because you know like like Kale. We're gonna call it the big K. Yeah. Kali, let's go Kali. Kali. What do you All think? Right. Chat room, what do you think? Kali, Kali, Kali. They're rebuilding as Kali or Kale or Kale. Kale's good. You should eat more kale. Kale, kale is very uh, good. And if you don't remember, uh, Backtrack is a penetration testing platform. It's been uh, relaunched mm-hmm. now, and the creators of Backtrack said that it's going to be based on a totally new Debian platform. They're keeping it under wraps, mm-hmm. adding that it's a fully Debian compliant packaging and repository system. I like that. They're sort of up uprooting the four year development cycle that they've had. And uh, they've included a little teaser video. Do you want me to play a little bit yeah, of it? Yeah, let's play that video. All right, here, I'll turn it down a little bit because it might be a little loud. Yeah, but uh, blow anyone's ears up. So uh, here, I'll play it, and then I'll, I'll narrate a few spots for a few audio listeners. If you have a hammer this summer, everything looks like a nail. The time has come for something new. Smoky light. Last break. I mean, it's just, it's its literally, as movie trailers go, I would watch this. I would literally go to Fandango right now and get tickets to watch this. Free and open source, the most advanced, the most advanced penetration testing suite ever. 
reborn. So they're calling it Backtrack Reborn. And so their whole metaphor is, is uh, old Backtrack was a hammer, and we're, we were all using hammers before, and now they're going to bring, they're getting rid of the hammer. Now they're, they're, they're busting out. You're busting. Yeah, you're busting out the uh, sledge there. It's yeah, like a twenty pound, thirty pound sledge. So no more hammers, and they're going to use precise tools, is what they say. Brought to you by mysterious man walking through doorway. No word on when this new version of Backtrack will hit the internet. Uh, after all, they say this is just a teaser. Uh, but all I they love it. all they're saying for now is that uh, they'll have an initial release out soon. I want tickets to this. I want to see this movie. Oh, it's not a movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I think as, as, as a security district commission goes, it shows that I love seeing it get this love. I love the fact that they put some real time into the they, trailer. They made a trailer for their district. I mean, that is, I'm sorry, but that's so awesome. Yeah. I love it. I think that's really cool. So cool. Take, take a look out for Kali or Kale mm-hmm. Linux or Kali or whatever you want to call it, and we'll let you know when it hits the web. And I have this. I now have this overwhelming urge to go and break a piggy bank with yeah. a sledgehammer. I don't yeah. know why. Uh, l- one quick story just to cover before we get out, or two last quick stories. Oh, yeah. Cover <laughs> Linux Pro saw a giant salary leap in wow. 2012, according to Dice. Cool. Technology salaries in the U.S. saw their biggest jump in more than a decade, says Dice. Mm. Uh, they surveyed 15,000 employees. Uh, a lot of sal- the uh, the first average annual wages for tech professionals in general jumped to more more than five percent in the last year, increasing to 85,000 cool. from 81,000. Wow, really? A little That's- cost of loving, cost of living love. I, I've, I, as a writer, I certainly don't see it. I haven't felt that either. <laughs> Uh, one interesting part, though, was for Linux professionals, the news was even better. Rather than a 5% increase in average of salaries over the past years, mm-hmm. those among the Linux crowd saw a 9% increase to $90,000. Linux using professionals also saw a 2% increase in the numbers of bonuses received Whoa. in the last year. In addition, wow. their bonuses, which amounted to 9000 on average, were considerably bigger than the 8600 8, received by gen- IT generals. Now, you have to wonder if this is based on their performance, this is based on the demand of, you know, maybe there's a lack of uh, Linux professionals out there, and so people are working really hard to retain the good ones. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they say, uh, for the last few years, we've seen paychecks for Linux professionals grow faster than we've seen for tech professionals overall, says Dice. That's true of both salaries and bonuses. Mm. What we've known Linux is a core skill, but it's starting to become a bankable reputation. More Linux, more money. Mo money, good money. It's a great. That's a great story. And one last story, like just as a mention, we don't have a lot of comments. I don't think unless mm-hmm. you do, Matt. Uh, Linux kernel developer Alan Cox, uh, most considered the mm-hmm. number two guy, has yeah. quit kernel development and he, I believe quit his job at Intel as well. Hmm. Uh, and uh, we had a we had a submission, a self submission here by Canalot. He includes links to uh, Alan Cox's recent funny things he said on the kernel mailing list, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as well as his recent Fedora rant that he had, right, and uh, so on and so forth. So our best, to Alan. Yeah, absolutely. I hope uh, hope life treats you well, and you you are find much success in what you're uh, going to be doing in the future. I, but it does beg the question: What is uh, Linus's uh, fallback plan should he uh, fall out of an airplane or something? I mean, like, what, what's that contingency plan look like? Who's our ben- benevolent dictator? Should he move on? What I would do is just you know? DD Linus to another person. Just you, you know, you could just bare metal the man, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe do a little clonezilla. Right there, yeah. you go. So uh, well, our, I, I like the DD action. Actually, that would work. Our best, Alan Cox, yeah. and uh, don't uh, don't shave that beard, sir. Yep. Keep rocking that beard. Maybe we'll see you again in the future. Sometimes he says he's leaving for family reasons. Can happen. And he says it's legit, Burn legit out, family yeah. reasons. Maybe we'll see him in the future return. Yep. 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 You never know. Could happen. All right, Matt. Well, that's all the news for this week. Matt, it's time to talk about some of the best video games that I've gotten my hands on recently. And uh, you and I were kicking around some ideas for the show with Steam coming out recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gotten a lot of emails into the show on what games people should be grabbing on Steam. We thought it was time to do an episode about this. We'd like to dedicate it to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of dedicated, I want to mention our segment sponsor, that is System76, mm-hmm. creators of the finest machines built to run Linux. They are uh, they are born to run Linux, these machines, yeah. and I have one right here in front of me. I have the System76 Bonobo Extreme. That's right. As a matter of fact, that's what you are looking at there in our background. That's right. This that is, is, that's wait, it. no, that's not the Bonobo. That's the Bonobo that's right the there. That's the Bonobo. There it is. And I, I clicked off of it. Sorry yep, about yep, that. But uh, what's great about this Bonobo is uh, during the show, if you're watching the video version, and this mm-hmm. is going to be kind of a visuals-heavy segment. Sure. Um, the the display is will be pushed out at 1080p, so 1080p on my screen, mm-hmm. and then this machine is mirroring that 1080p display on our remote capture machine. Oh. So it is rendering it twice, and you're going to see the gameplay is just beautiful. I mean, this Bonobo so you're extreme rendering is a, double rendering, and it's still getting the performance I was seeing earlier. Oh, That's, this Bonobo is a wow. monster. It's a great. monster with massive amounts of storage, a love great it. trackpad. Uh, so check out the Bonobo Extreme if you're looking for a desktop killer. Some NVIDIA but, uh, graphics there. I love that. System 76 has a ton of 
of great laptops, ton of great desktops. Yes. Um, we've we reviewed some of them here on the show. So thank you to System76. And if you want to get a machine built to run Linux hassle-free, go check out System76.com. All right, Matt. I want to give a mention to some games we're not going to talk about this week, but okay. they, they just made it to Linux, so it's exciting. Half-Life and Counter-Strike are now available mm-hmm. natively mm-hmm. for Linux on Steam. You know... I I'm I'm used to, I'm a fan of that because I, I could actually see myself getting back into a little uh, Counter Strike land parties too. Oh, I I just I used to just because I, I could play Counter Strike and not even think I just <laughs> like tilt my head drool and just nuke right. I mean yeah. I just go. It's yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. I love that game. All right, so uh, now I thought we'd start with I've got things kind of broken down here. We've got mm-hmm. casual games, nice a little casual game. I got intense games, okay, and okay. then I got some stuff I want to talk about. It's coming on Kickstarter that I funded recently because right. I thought they were great. I thought other people might want to a little hear bit about of something it. for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So let's start with uh, let's start with our first casual game on Steam. So if you want to get your hands yeah, on a Steam yeah. game but you're not big into first person shooters, I want to me I want to introduce you to I don't know Matt. Uh, how would you pronounce that name? Polynomial. Okay. Polynomial. Uh, Paul. I'm going to say polynomial. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Not, yeah, right. I wouldn't know how else to pronounce it. That's what I'd call it. Now, I've just got this game recently, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm going to play it here for you. Okay. And uh, so think of this as a... Oh, I might... Hold on. I have to... There's a little, oh, little trick I have to do with my little mouse. Mouse tweakage going yeah. on there. There we go. See, otherwise it spins if I... Oh, no, this is a neat... That's neat. Okay. So think of this as a space shooter. Okay. Yeah. Nice. In But the space isn't space. <laughs> it's music. It's so, okay. Space is in space. It's music. So is yeah. it music visualized? Is yeah. that kind of what we're? Okay. So the entire environment reacts to the music that's being played, and you know oh, the wild. idea is you set up your own playlist, right? Right. Oh, this is true. And then the music. So here, I'll next song. When you're done looking oh, that's just. So here, let's see. So now I got back out. Oh, this is trippy. <laughs> Trying to, there we go. Here's some Ronald Jankies, okay? And now watch the music respond. You see how there's waves down there? <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely. I can see that because it's just it's like it's never really seen twice. That is visually. I don't know if you guys are for audio listeners. You really need to just take a moment and watch the video. It, it's yeah, it's like a visualizer that you're flying around the side of. There's bad guys. It's probably the most visual thing I've seen in a long time, actually. It's because it's not just about graphics. It's about more of an experience. Right. And and if you oh, look, like, see in the background, things are reacting. To, different particles react to the music beats. And if you put, like, some hard metal in here, they go crazy. And if you put, you oh, know, yeah. depending on what you do in here. And you I, I throw a little around. ACDC at it see what happens. Yeah, put throw a little ACDC in yeah. there. Yeah. And you. what's fun is it's not like you can play on different difficulty levels, so it's not, like, very stressful. Yeah. And if you have a song you really like, you can listen to the song while you play, and it kind of becomes incorporated into the game. You know, I can see this as being really cool just to clear your mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, yeah, it's exactly right. You know, just relax mm-hmm. without getting totally stressed right. out. It's have just fun. trippy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, where was this in the 60s? Yeah, there, yeah exactly. Whee! So anyways, that's uh, that was polynomial. Wow. And uh, it's a cool. it's a great casual game that, uh, you know, you throw your own music library, and obviously I just kind of tossed it uh, how much is it? Is it? Oh, I don't know. Actually, it was like nine bucks. I think. That's not bad. No, I'd, I'd, I'd buy that. Bad. Okay. So uh, the uh, pol- the polynomial. Polynomial. I played a bunch on the live stream uh, this morning. Yeah. Too. And uh, it, you know uh, you uh, so here in fact uh, it's a little loud, but I'll go back in. Okay. I'll show you one cool thing about it is uh, besides the fact that the interface is super cool. Yeah, if you go here in Sound cool. and Music, you see here's the they include a lot of really good music, mm-hmm. right? Oh right. And, see, and then okay, I've imported my own. Nice. So you're not having to import necessarily right. import your. And interface. so you can just but you can. And it oh. just brings up, you know, if you want to, right, yeah, it right. comes with great music. You don't have to. Sure. But if you knew there were some songs you wanted to hear, it just brings up the ad, the GTK open file log, right. file dialog box, and uh, so, and then, you know, I, I imported a bunch of Ronald Janky stuff into here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a way to kind of customize it the way I liked. That's cool. Yeah, really good game, and uh, it's not too uh, stress-inducing. It won't raise the blood pressure. Uh, all right, awesome. so that was Polynormal. We'll have a link to all of these, by the way. So that way, yeah. if you didn't catch it, just go That's find the check link. Out. All right. Another no, fun one. No, but it, it could just be about This it. is called Hacker Evolution Duality. <laughs> cool name. What's really cool about it is uh, you can play in single-player mode or network mode. Sure. And there's also mods available for it. Mm-hmm. But you are a hacker. Okay. And the idea is is you are going to compromise firewalls and networks wow. and the more networks and firewalls you can compromise, the more access you get. Right, right. Okay. So here's so here's the firewall I'm going to hack in America, right? Firewall. Excellent. And it actually shows that on the display. You it's got two CPUs and I can it. Okay. So I bring up my firewall decryption dialogue and it's like I'm, a defrag box. That's neat. I'm essentially like it's like uh, <laughs> cells left to, to bypass right, the, right. And then once I get in there, once okay, I are we crack able to it, show this to them or 
Oh, sorry. I just I was just <laughs> thinking, this is really cool, guys. You should totally see this. I didn't know I wasn't. No, that's okay. Uh, then here's console. So now I've brought up a console yeah. on the firewall. Yep. yep. And so I could do like an LS on the firewall's console, right? So I'm in here and I'm hacking oh, this. Oh, seriously? Yeah, so I'm hacking this firewall now. Okay. And uh, it's 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 essentially, this is the interface. You zoom in and zoom out and get onto different stuff. Uh, I I just That's picked this up last night, but I thought, cool. again, this is like for geeks that want to grab something on Steam, maybe yeah. you don't want to shoot things. Right. But, and you're a computer guy. And are you using actual, uh, you know, Unixy commands? Uh, or, or is it more just like the, yeah. the hacker movies? To it, has it's like its, a, it has its own <laughs> vernacular sure. and its own stuff like that. But you do. Okay. See, you see, the idea is you make money. You have a certain oh, okay. time to get in and out of things before you're detected. Can they you set up like botnets and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Oh, if you right do on. that, you compromise. So I could compromise oh. this firewall here, which then I could launch an cool. attack from this firewall to the next firewall. And yeah, so it's, you know. Can you get into like, and now is it multiplayer? Are you able to like get into little yeah. hacker wars? Yeah. Oh, you sold yeah. it right and, there. And what's really neat I'm about it is yeah. you can do uh, you can do open worlds where other people can join and you can have hacker competitions. Oh, but dude. here's what's really cool is they also have mods. So That's people cool. are out there modding it right now. I haven't loaded any of these mods. Yeah, yeah. People have mods out there right now to do even like, you know. That's, uh, okay. The things. fact that you can do multiplayer, you can actually, you know, that, that could be a lot of fun. I uh, a lot of fun. I installed it from Steam to get Hacker Evolution Duality working. I did on a 64-bit install. I had to install uh -huh. some extra packages. I have uh, that information. So it'll be in the show, in the show notes, notes if you're uh, on a 64-bit system. Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. Now let's talk about the game that I think is going to be the one that okay. uh, I probably will walk away from this episode continuing to play. From. Oh, yeah? I think this, could, this game could be the one that causes me to lose the most productivity. <laughs> the, the productivity killer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been out for a couple of years, okay. and uh, we, we'll link to some reviews in the show notes. It's called X3 Reunion. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And X3 Reunion is in beta mm -hmm. on Linux. So it And it does have Gorgeous. some issues. Uh, and so cool. I love the I love the little UI there. Yeah. That's cool. In fact, why don't I help uh, this one? I'm going to turn it up just a little bit so you guys can hear. Yeah, some of the yeah, dialogue. get some volume going. Okay. Yeah. In fact, uh, there's a. I'll just start the opening sequence so you guys can see it. And for you on the audio show, you guys will be able to hear yeah. it, and, and it's pretty cool. There's also uh, there's like demos and and mm -hmm. uh, you know training levels and things like that. But who cares cool. about that? All right. All right. So we'll go new game, and uh, we'll just do a we'll just do a normal game. Go with our default dude yeah. and all that. And by yeah. the way, on this uh, Bonobo Extreme with the SSD drives, yeah. the load time on these games, I was watching some YouTube videos. I could not believe how long some people have to wait for some of these games to load. Right. So uh, if you have an SSD, it makes a huge difference. You can't. Just, I mean, so that's my ship. Oh, this is kind of cool. Okay. This it's is got this, a very spacey feel to it. Oh, this is, this is. So wow. what's great about this game is you could, you could get heavily involved in combat, mm -hmm. or you could just become a trader and build an empire. So this this is cool because it's like it's very it's like if you've ever like had dreams of being in Star Trek yeah. or being on Babylon Five or something and you want that lifestyle but you don't necessarily want to I don't know get a divorce and leave your family this is a great alternative um, you know you can actually uh, jump right into that so that's cool because uh, the wife from the Babylon Five stuff doesn't always that doesn't always mesh with not my yeah. so this guy here he's he's doing a little dialogue. Yeah. This is really gorgeous. Yeah, he's telling I, us about it. And now you got a little map off in the lower right. And a 3D corner. map at yeah. that, which is really cool. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with space, it gives you kind of a yeah. sector by sector. Uh, so here here is uh, I'll show you a little bit of the a little bit of the UI. Yeah. Oh wow, that is that's you, very that's really yeah. Wow, I, I can't I can't give I can't provide words to really it's gorgeous just how it looks. Awesome it, you know, you're in space. Yeah, you're it's flying like gorgeous around. times about 50. Yeah. It's awesome. just whoa. <laughs> Because it has more than just the graphics. It has a very fluid, transitional feel as you move around. So there's my ship. Oh, dude, that's cool. And there's another view of my ship. Oh, man. And that's the gate that I'm going to. And so the idea is is that uh, you fly around to these different gates and jump around to different spots. So here, I'll approach the gate, and then yeah. uh, I'll wrap it up from there. So I'm actually controlling this, by the way, with my trackpad, which isn't too and bad. It, no, it doesn't look too bad. And I noticed the gate is realistically getting slightly larger as you approach. Yeah, it's not... Yeah. It's not Ridiculously, right. it's like skipping frame rates. Or yeah, like that. it looks really smooth. It looks natural. So uh, cool. again, this is X3 Reunion, and uh, mm -hmm. it just it just became available for Linux this week. It's it's came out in 2011. Mm -hmm. It's not brand brand new. Sure. Um, during the during the live stream, we showed a review that G4 did that was quite yeah. hilarious. Oh, that was uh, yeah. There was a, a, they were searching for stuff. It was it yeah. Was well, funny. It's, okay. So the main bad guy in this is called uh, the cock. Yeah, it's spelled with a K. With a K. Yeah, K and a, a, a K H, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's, so there's a. So here, I'm going to go through this gateway, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. All right. So now I'm traveling through the gateway, which I just think is super cool. Oh yeah, it's kind of got the. You got, and then you end which up. Which again makes me think of B5 immediately. It's the first thing you know where they go through the gates. Yeah, or even Buck Rogers. That'd work. Waiting to the west of the gateway. So, 
Oh, this is cool. This game can be a lot of things. Now, it looks like there's some activity where those lights are blinking. I oh, wonder yeah. if that's uh, uh, like a go-to point or if that's... Yep, a... and so what's great is because it is so massive, I can toggle on autopilot. It'll just take me to my next destination. Oh, dude, seriously. So I go up, I can get myself a beverage, come back. Right, right, right. Uh, you can get into some intense awesome combat or you yeah. can completely avoid combat. I, I, uh, I've I, just started playing it because it just came out this week, but I gotta that's tell That's interesting. You. So it can be a shooting game or it cannot be a shooting game depending on what your interests are. Yep. Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, Mr. Matt. Oh, yes. Yeah. So anyways, that. that is uh, X3. It's in beta. There are a few issues I've had with my USB mouse, just, sure. as, a, just as a warning to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, X3 is definitely one of my more serious games. So I put that in the serious. So, so if you have a serious uh, laptop like your uh, unit here, uh, your, your trackpad should be uh, good to go. Yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, and uh, now, I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you about one more serious game, and then I'm going to step back and uh, I'm going to cover uh, one more kind of just, uh, it's a game everybody knows about. It's kind of casual. It's kind of mm -hmm. hardcore. It's retro. But okay. one more, we'll do one more real serious game. This is like, you know, if you really want to shoot some stuff. I really want to shoot some stuff. Chris. You really want to I shoot really, some stuff? I want to blow things right. up and just kick names and kick butt and all that. Now, so. I got to warn you. Okay. Um, a little gory? Oh, yeah. It is a little gory. Yeah, so. I, I, saw, I saw the uh, pop up there. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's going to have some blood and guts. This is this is Killing Floor. You so, probably, you yeah. might have heard of this before. It's been out It's been out on Steam since uh, since uh, one of the, semi-recently after the beta hit, it came Built out. Built on Unreal uh, yep. Engine. I'm it's an Unreal uh, game. Got some uh, little so, uh, clothing uh, challenge individual there. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Okay. Uh, if you are a little queasy, you might want to yeah. look away. Parental advisory at this point. Yes, plural advisory. So let's uh, let's do uh, the only thing that I think is the right thing to do on the Linux Action Show, Matt. Let's kill zombies on a moon base. Oh, right. Oh, yep. absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to load the uh, moon base map. Killing Floor comes with a ton of great maps. During the Christmas time, there were a ton of Christmas-themed maps that I was able to get off Steam. Oh, can you, like, go as Santa and, ha like, just taking out reindeer? I mean, I, there were Santa zombies. Oh, uh, I'm sold. Yeah, it was, it was really great. That's what so. I'm looking for. And again, another great multiplayer game. Oh, I would play this. So I here would I am, totally play this. just chilling on my moon base, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I have a kind of an objective arrow that I follow, and then you get waves of zombies. So here I'm going to go up here, and the gravity is a little different on the moon base, which is fun. Okay, so it's, it's a, yeah, it definitely has a, a UT feel to it, but it, yeah, yeah. the, the gravity is going to be a little different. So now what I hear okay. is the scratching of zombie feet coming in. See, now they start coming <laughs> at me. Oh, man. Oh, no. Nice recoil. Oh, oh, see, then it starts getting a little... Uh, oh, it's a little up in yeah. the drill there. And the maid's gonna have to come in and clean this up. Clearly, yeah, it's so. definitely a mess. Yeah, it's, it's getting messy. You have to call uh, housekeeping here pretty quick. Yeah, housekeeping, housekeeping. So, uh, so what, what's your weaponry look like out of the box? You just handgun. You get to this start? handgun, but you start okay. to upgrade. The other thing that's kind of neat about it is uh, there's a little bit of component of uh, locking and closing doors behind you. Yep. So like you go into rooms. Sure. And then once you get in there, you know the idea is. Oh, it's a big boy. Oh, he's a, he's a big yeah, boy. Oh, oh boy, yeah. See, he gets he's that. Wants to give you a hug, Chris. He's, come on, give me some love. There we go. Oh no, not so much. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh no, man. Oh. <laughs> he just wanted to. Yeah, I did a lot better last night. I did a lot better when I was doing this last night. Obviously, Left 4 Dead, another well known zombie game. Yeah. Killing Floor uh, is is a lot a lot of fun. I kind of like it for just solo playing a little more than I like Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead for me has always been a multiplayer game for some right. reason. Killing Floor probably would be too. I could see this being a lot of fun as a multiplayer because I was a big Unreal Tournament guy. And being this is built on their engine, I could see myself gravitating to this like a, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. a magnet on a fridge. So here's some creepy levels. Like here's a oh, really wow. creepy at night level where I'm outside. <laughs> Look at all these zombies coming oh, up here. Man. Hey boys, how's it going? <laughs> Have you seen our pants? We're missing our pants. Yeah, I can totally. You always want to get these big boys as fast as possible. Oh, yeah. Hello, big boy. Hello. Just head to the, head to there the we go. That went a lot better than last time. Yeah. And apparently the headshot or the groin shot yeah. is where it's at. Yeah. One of the other. If they have groin still, I'm not quite sure. Well, how you that shoot works. them enough, they won't. I mean, I'll take it. Uh, so, anyways. Oh, yeah. So, you also have team members you're trying to go save. So, see, that's where this arrow is telling me to go off and go save my right. team member. Uh, obviously, a lot of fun, but a little gory. Oh, yeah. No, so. it's definitely gory. And yeah. it looks like you've accumulated uh, 575 pounds. Uh, so that's pretty I'm cool. I'm a killer, Matt. You I'm, are a, I'm a killer. Butt. And, like, you should have seen me last night. I got my shotgun. Oh, there. see, that's where it's at right there. Mm -hmm. We, for our, like, we have a, we're really not game, big yeah. gamers at the house. We have a Nintendo Wii, and yeah. we have the shotguns, you know, and you get in there, and the little Nintendo Wii shotguns, you just, you get in there and get it done, you know? It's a good time. Uh, okay, so, An, uh, one honorable mention, and then I have one last cool thing, and then I think these okay. are the games I want to focus on, and we'll talk about the Kickstarter project. Cool, cool. Crusader Kings recently made mm. it to Steam for Linux, and it's 
currently one of the most popular games on Steam right now. Oh, wow. I cannot give this game enough justice. I don't know much about it, but it is a real-time strategy game that is very history-involved, and I, I just want to show you a little bit of it just to give you an introduction to tell you that if you want a very deep, intense game but you don't want to shoot people, so I'm not going to call it a casual game because there's nothing casual about this, mm -hmm. but it's also not a violent game. It's a thinking man's it's an, game. All right, yeah. it's a, Exactly, great mm -hmm. way. And it has multiplayer support. Yeah. You can connect to a server. You can host a server, which is really cool. But let's just do single player for this. So you, you start up in the single player. You pick your territory. Let's go with France, right? So and you then roll I have your cursor over France or each individual area, and it gives you uh, in, and like tells you who the king is. Yeah. Tells you, okay. Or the duke, or, or yeah. The duke so or I'm going to take Duke William. He's a bastard, according to this. Uh, and like other real time strategy games, you can you can adjust the uh, the time, so oh, yeah. you can make history and time progress faster or slower. And uh, just for for demonstration purposes, I've uh, I've pumped it up, so time is flying by real quick. And as we go, you can see uh, the different countries are starting to build militaries. Oh, cool. And you can go in here and you can select your resources that you want, and it comes up with tons of help, lots of helpful information. Um, so it's like if you get lost, it, you would have to read all this to get started, which is kind of where I'm at right now. Right. I'm still at the stage where I need to read everything. So this, this is a great game if you're willing to make the time investment yeah. to learn about it and how it works. But yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like one of those games you could play for a very long time. Oh, yeah, you could totally make a lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. All right, so that's uh, so there you go. And again, just gorgeous. And as I zoom out now, you can start to see like you see all these shields oh, yeah, that are new, showing up. Oh, there's some new shields showing up. So there's armies. Oh, look built. at this one right here. Oh look, no, oh, what's, some, what's this guy doing? Some activity going. Yeah. And then you can roll your cursor over and actually get the details yeah, of yeah. what's happening and get the hints, so I know yeah. what the heck I'm looking at. Um, anyways, just gorgeous, and I, I love the uh, I love the graphics of it. Well, and it's a, it's a nice hybrid because you're you're getting that thinking man's game, but you're not losing out. You're you're not going all Oregon Trail with it. I mean, it's not like you know just totally uh, boring to look at. It's actually attractive and fun. I so. think I could I think I could turn down the time on that, and mm -hmm. I could just play it and play it and sure. play it and play it. So that's Crusader Kings Two available on Steam right now. One last uh, game that is actually on Steam. But for me and for people in the chat room, is not actually working. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the installer is a little borked. Uh, but you can still get it if you bought it as part of the Humble Bundle, and that's Cave Story. Oh, okay. Cave Story is a classic uh, side-scroller, but what's really cool is right out of the box, I plugged oh, in this Logitech nice. dual-action controller. I like it. Right? And it's just a little USB controller. I plugged this into my Bonobo, and uh, now I'm able to control Cave Story using my controller here. And with this particular game, there is no config involved, I believe. It no, yeah, just, just plug uh, in and go. Bam, thank you, yep, man. yep. So uh, here we go. So now I'm controlling this with the uh, Logitech uh, controller here using the D-pad, which is fun. And, yeah. Uh, oh, Cave, see, that'd be good. Cave Story has got like, uh, let's see if I can turn it up a little bit. So it reminds me a little bit of uh, Metroid. It does have a Metroid feel to it, yeah. Yeah, here, I'll run around a little bit and show it to you. So you go down here and, oh, don't do that, Matt. Uh -oh. And uh, you look out for bad guys. Yeah, bad guy got you. And see, like, when you, you can get health ups now, uh, you won't be able to hear this, Matt, but the folks at home, lis listen to this, folks. When I get this, it sounds just like Metroid. Hmm? It's a little low. I don't know if it came right. through. I'm sure it's a hurt. But, uh... Uh, so you go through, you get up, you get equipment upgrades, you avoid bad guys. Like so, uh, the first thing I tried to do when I when I started playing Kid Stories, I tried to jump on the guys, like I right. just did there. Can't do that. Cannot jump on guys. But pretty shortly, once you get into Cave Story, you get to you get to equip up. So you can go in here and uh, so like this will be a little gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Called the called the Polar Star. <laughs> yeah, I had to read that twice. I was yeah. Like, what now? Okay. Uh, so now I've got now I got a gun for shooting. Oh oh, and it's got this. It's got like this whole, you know, you're trying to save somebody angle to it. With mm -hmm. uh, you go to the computer terminal and and they're chatting with you. So, all right, let's go that's through it because cool. I want to show you the gun real quick. All right, so yeah, you're uh, so that's the person I'm going to go save, I believe. And uh, let me go. Here, up, yep, there, up, there, we there. Go. there you go. Uh, okay, so let's go shoot some stuff, Matt, and then we'll call it on this one. So now I can run through and now, like in Metroid, where you go off on a tangent sometimes just to get a weapon, right. and then once you get your weapon, you can actually accomplish what you want to accomplish. You know, yeah. that's kind of how this is too. So now I've gotten my gun. So now I'm actually going to go get the work done. So this so far has just been a tangent, so I can get my weapon. It definitely has a retro feel to it. I, it you know, I, I could, I could, I, I don't know if I'd be, be as into this as I would the other games, but I definitely think I would use this to relax with. I would just yeah. kind of kick back and unwind. This is kind sure. of in the casual category uh, or retro is what I put it in. But uh, you know, it, I tell you, it made it a lot better once I got a controller. Playing oh yeah, with the well, controller. trying to do that, trying to do a game like this on on a on a laptop, I think you really would want a controller just because it yeah. is it has a retro feel to it. You yeah. kind of want that. It's, sure. it's a lot more fun on the controller. Yeah. So that's Cave Story. All right, now why don't we wrap up? And uh, Cave Story is on Steam, but like I mentioned earlier, it is not working currently for right. some reason. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but you can get it through. Uh, how'd you mention? Uh, I got it as I. It was like in one of the humble bundles, and mm-hmm. with the humble indie bundles, once you buy them, you can always go back to the site and download them at any time. Okay. So uh, that's what I did. So that'd be a workaround they yeah. could look into, and it works just fine when you do it sure. that way. And I'm sure they'll get the Steam version working. Yeah, shoot, it'll happen. Yeah, sure. it's in their interest. All right, Mr. Matt. All right. So, so those are all games that are available right now. You can go get your hands on them, and they're some of the most fun I've had on Linux and gaming for a long time. Now, of course, tons of open source games, yeah. tons of other games. We have. I actually was originally just going to do like this massive games this blowout. Total just, catalog. Oh, yeah. But then you couldn't spend the time yeah. on each. Right. So I thought, you know what? We'll keep it focused. We'll talk about a few games, and that leaves other games that are just as awesome or even more yeah. awesome to talk about in the future. Uh, like Heroes of North was one that was just mentioned. Oh, yeah, uh, that, that's one you got to have a little more time with for sure. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about a couple of Kickstarter games that I've gotten, and then I want to tell folks how they can go find their own Kickstarter games down the road that have Linux support. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that All I right. backed uh, is called uh, Wild Man, an evolutionary action RPG. Wow. And uh, it has uh, it's and the reason why I like about this is it's coming from Gas Powered Games. They're actually based right here in Washington. Oh, are they really? And I like this idea when you have a kind of an established game development shop coming along saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. we have an existing crew, we have an existing work process, and we just want a little extra funding to get." to be able to pull this off. Sure. So this is, to me, uh, here, I'll, here, let me go play their video. Yeah, let's check that out. To me, this is looking like uh, a really fun, like fun little RPG that mm. uh, they're they're planning. And again, not all of these, but a lot of times I'll only throw in money when they have confirmed Linux support. Oh, absolutely. I don't like it when they dangle that because yeah. I'll tell you, I've backed a Kickstarter that had Linux as a stretch goal and they never reached that stretch funding, but they right. reached their base funding, so I still ended up getting charged, but I'm not going to oh, get a Linux version. Right, so you kind of got gypped. It's just like, yeah. really? Yeah. This guy's hilarious, this uh, gas-powered. Maybe we could go down there and talk to these guys. That but, would be cool. So they they, uh, they have, uh, you know, a very compelling-looking game here, and it'll be uh, it'll be uh, RPG. see their artwork here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 19, 19 days left to go on this Kickstarter. Mm. They're trying to reach $1.1 million. Wow, but, that's that's a bi- that's a big goal, but you know it's, it's a serious game. But the fact that the behind the scenes that they're giving here in this video, I think it will get uh, people interested enough to want to contribute to that. Yeah, uh, the chat room saying they might have fired a lot of their staff. Maybe that's why they're kickstarting it. I don't know. No, but that's uh, certainly. I like cleans I, out the books. I like uh, I like the game they're talking about doing here, and the guys they want to have do it have a lot of experience. They talk about some of their ideas. They've already built demo code, which I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and they've got uh, they've got uh, some videos in here and some screenshots yeah. of it. So it, it's it gorgeous. I mean, I, I like what they're doing with it. I'd be interested to see what they come up with. It'll be uh, it'll be a uh, crush your enemies type RPG, and uh, it'll be uh, so far so far it's got three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Well, nineteen days to go. Uh, a lot of people saying that it won't make it. I'm saying I've seen I've seen stuff like this make it in five. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not it's, it's not impossible. The, it's usually at the very end they mm-hmm. get a rush of funding. All right, yeah. here's one with 21 days to go. They have a much uh, much oh, wow. much more uh, realistic goal, thirty thousand. Yeah, and they're already at nineteen thousand. And they got twenty one days. So it's yeah. called Artisans. Mm. Uh, you take on exciting missions with friends to battle smart monsters. You craft, you draw, and you trade unique gear. It'll be available for <laughs> Mac, Linux, and Windows. That is, I'm looking at the video of this, and it's just, it's just crazy looking. Artisans I love it. Online multiplayer. Visually, it's very compelling. PC, it's a uh, it's like the probably the, one of the most ADD friendly games I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, get, oh my gosh, it's got a cell shaded kind of look to it. Yeah, uh, it's got a cartoon, but well done. Not like cheap cartoon right. animation. It's like cartoon because it's stylistic. That is crazy looking. Yeah, uh, I'd play that. Yeah, and so I backed this again because they're coming right out of the box with Linux support. It, they're at nineteen thousand of their thirty thousand goal. Yeah. So uh, well, we'll see. And uh, again, uh, the other reason I like this is another established team. They're not. You know, when you have people that are getting together for the first time, that introduces so much variable to it a does. project. But they have some finished product that they're showing off mm-hmm. here, and they being 19K working. with a 30 day, 30K goal with 21 days to go is ex- painfully realistic. Yeah. Painfully realistic. They're sitting Very in a good easy. spot. They're sitting in definitely in a good Not position. Hard. All they need is a little media. They'll so I so I tossed them I tossed them a few bucks because, you know, I get yeah. you get early access to the beta. Uh, the other thing that's going to be really cool is mm-hmm. that it's going to be online. So you're going to actually be able to play this cool game with other folks. There's going to be co-op missions. You're going to be able to, you know, uh, create and mod gear and then trade it to your right. other fellow players. Oh, no, that's cool. A little bit of commerce. You can yeah. uh, customize. You can build you'll be able to hand draw. Your own oh, no kidding. Okay, yeah. now that's sweet. And that's then that'll really be your cool. equipment in the game. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so that's why they're calling it Artisan. So basically, I, I can hand draw badly, you know, like some ridiculous looking contraption. And then the physics and the dimensions and all that, when I'm using it, mm-hmm. that's all detect. Oh, dude, and that's then, so cool. And then you can trade that. So if you make a really, oh, like, if you make some wonky valuable weapon, you you know, you could trade that to me and uh, I could trade you my weapons and... Uh, and anyway. I imagine that there's probably limitations as to what weapons you could design. I'm sure you can't I walk in so. there with a bazooka or something. I haven't yeah. really... Uh, you 
Although I, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Can't that, draw a gun. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'd walk Swords, out. flames, sure. hats. See, yeah. I would just go Gallagher hammer and call it a day. I mean, honestly. Uh, hand drawn cocks, all that kind of thing. Yeah, spell with a yeah. K. Spell with a K. Spell, yeah, I'd, I'd draw some of those too. Yeah. That would be uh, that'd be weird. So I'll, I, I've, I've put links to both of these projects in the show notes. Um, and, you know, uh, if they materialize and they ship yeah. their game for Linux, I'll give them a little review here on the totally. show in the future, right? That would be cool, especially that one where you can do your own weapons. That's that's really neat. I like yep. that. So that's Artisans by Artisans Inc. is the is the one we do, the one mm-hmm. we draw your own weapons. Mm-hmm. And the one before that was Wild Men, an evolutionary action RPG by Gas Powered Games. Nice. All right, Matt. Now I want to link uh, to f- folks over to uh, GamingOnLinux.com's wiki page Diane? for crowdfunding games, and they've been keeping it. They keep it That's up to cool. date uh, with the funding goal, <laughs> with the genre, the minimum pledge, oh. and the deadline. Wow! And all of these in this category are all Kickstarter games that have Linux support. In fact, not all, they're not always... And these are all confirmed Linux support. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. that's cool. And they're not always uh, ones that uh, have a, have, uh, have reached their... Like, some of them sure. might be stretched. Like, right here, you see, they also define, do they re- is Linux without a stretch goal? So you can see, here's a couple oh, projects right. where Linux is a stretch goal, Here's and here's projects where you get Linux if they get funded. That helps you make a better, more informed decision. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so this is a great wiki page over in GamingOnLinux.com, and we'll link you directly to the uh, list of crowdfunded games. Then mm-hmm. they're also keeping track of funding uh, completed games, mm-hmm. and uh, if they were again Linux without a stretch, if they were Linux with us with a stretch, did they reach that stretch goal? What was that stretch goal price? So this could also this right. part of it could be good research for people out there that want to do a Linux Kickstarter project and mm-hmm. kind of see what's been successful, what's failed, in, in what in where. No, you should kind of do some homework, right? And then yeah. kind of and, and decide at what point you how are you going to strategize your uh, your campaign because there is a lot of strategy involved. And, in and look at this, Matt. Look how sh- much shorter the funding failed list is. Is compared to the funding successful list. Well, and I think between the two lists, especially being uh, the complete, the uh, successful one's really long compared to the failed one. But I think yeah. more importantly, it allows you to to then go and look at those campaigns See and say, failed. "Oh, that's why," yeah. because they didn't fa- they failed to show blank or they didn't get the uh, traction with blank or whatever it may be. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, anyways, we'll have a link to that in the show notes. And nice. uh, you know, I found going through Kickstarter, uh, there's some stuff that. Uh, I, you know, could end up coming to Linux that could be really, really fun. So it's like Steam is introducing this nice, steady supply of games, uh, some of which, most of which have been out but not available for Linux. Kickstarter is supplying this steady stream of, a, a little slower of a trickle, sure, but a steady stream of games that are coming to Linux. You've got Desora out there we talked about at the top yeah. of the show. And then, of course, just, you know, other great open source games that games we covered. Games really. I mean, remember back in the day when it was like the crappiest game in the universe was exciting because it was on Linux and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. We yeah. got Postal. You these know. are, no, these are serious <laughs> games. These are awesome, you know, because truly it, you, 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 yeah, it used to be really limited. This so, is really I exciting. mean, oh, it doesn't give me, too bad it doesn't give me a count, but you can see oh, here, I mean, these yeah. are all games that I've bought to run on Linux now, mm-hmm. and this is a good list. Uh, also, an honorable mention, FTL, Faster Than Light, was a it was a Kickstarter game mm-hmm. with Linux as a stretch goal, I believe. It re- it made that stretch goal, now it's available on Steam. And it's have, on your system, it's ha- being used. Have you seen Faster Than Light? No, I have not seen this. I'll just give this one quick mention, because yep. it's so cool. So this is a Starship game. Okay, got me there. Where you take, it, where you take over the operational aspects. So it's not a shooter so much as... What happens when Star- you're the crew Starship of Starship management, ship. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it, what's great is if you're a Star Trek fan, oh, yes, it am. uses all Star Trek terminology in some to, nice. to the point where it's a ripoff, but in a, in a way that I completely condone. But that's good because then it allows you to apply your knowledge to something uh, feasible. Yeah. And, and if, you want a, if you want a game that's going to make you feel like a stupid, uh, this will do it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And okay, what's I great is so this ship that I'm on right here is, is called yeah. The Crystal. Mm-hmm. Well, that is named after a writer for Star Trek Online. So there's oh, a ton. Nice. If you're really into the Star Trek scene and all of that, there's a ton of little stuff in here right. that you would recognize. So here's my ship, and you see you get a top-down overview of your ship. And then what I can do during combat is I direct my crew to go into hazardous areas to oh, repair wow. warp cores. Oh, I, you know, <laughs> to send them over here to the firing chamber to fire. If there's a breach, I have to go fix them before all the air is sucked out of the room. And this is a very hard. Now, game. is that just the ship management, or do you also get to manage personnel? Like uh, you have someone that's being insubordinate, or maybe perhaps they can you. Can can you spa- I want to know, you know can, can I space my first officer? That's so really what I want to know. I started you know? playing this a, a couple of months ago, yeah. and then I got it again when it came for Steam. And every sure. time I only get through the first battle before I end up giving up. Right, right. I'll be it's honest. just like too much so, going on. I've yeah. never had to do any uh, staff management, but it is along those types of games. And you see, like uh, you have red alert status, you have shields, you're part of a federation, you I have like torpedoes, that. you have phasers, right? I'm you have all that. It, stuff. It. But yeah. it does sound like it would be overwhelming, and I probably have to ease my way into it. The one thing that's a little different is you jump. 
So sure. uh, you have faster than light for jumping. Okay, so you then pick a point on uh, for audio listeners. You pick a point on this map, yeah. and then you decide basically where you're going to then jump to. So well, then I'll jump, and of course when you jump, in, in, cool little graphic there. Yeah, okay. a little Battlestar Galactica yeah. type yeah, jump. Totally right? right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I thankfully I jumped to a spot of empty space. So now I've first cat- inside of an asteroid. Yeah. Well, or a bunch of bad guys. So like yeah. here I'll jump here. I'm going to bet money there's going to be bad guys here, and they're going to destroy me. <laughs> All right, so here I am. <laughs> oh, look at this. Looks like an ice cream. Uh, we have a bad guy. Okay. So then it gives you the stats on the bad guy, what their capabilities are. Is that our relationship neutral? So okay. here we go. A specially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand mm-hmm. over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free. So now my options are draw straws and send over a crew member to the slavers, or... <laughs> right? I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> or we will never surrender one of our crew to the slavers. Oh, I'm totally going to, you know. Draw the, straws? Yeah, the, draw the straws? red shirt on level four has been slacking. Right. I'm going right. to send them to the slavers. This is why you have a red shirt, Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. completely. Okay, all right. all right. So I'll, we'll do uh, we'll do draw straws. Yeah. All right, see what happens. All right, so I'm drawing straws. <laughs> as long as it's not you, you're okay. And you should actually see a shuttle leave, I think. Uh, I don't know what happens next, but. <laughs> or you see some little dude floating. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then they just, you know, grapple and hook them in or something. That'd be weird. I dig, I dig that. FTL is considered roguelike, says uh, Crispy oh, okay. in the chat room. I'm not sure. But uh, anyways. Right. Whatever. Super fun game. Yeah, definitely I... a challenge. And retro, too, But at the same I, time. I'm going to have to make some suggestions. I want to be able to space low-performing crew. I'm just saying yeah. that's a feature that I want in right. this game. And I mean that seriously. I'm dead serious. Well, then you, then you, just, awesome. then you just send out your counselor, Troy, yeah. crew member. Oh, it, right, you right. know, I don't need a counselor. She's first to go. I'm, I'm yeah. spacing her. <laughs> I, 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 lo- I love the actress. I think she's a no. wonderful, talented well, woman. And I love the character, but I don't want right. her in my grill if no, I'm a right. captain. I want her as a yeah. viewer, not yeah. as a captain. That's yeah, all you're I'm right. No, you're totally right. Yep. Uh, so anyways, check those out. Just a quick recap. We've got uh, the polynormal or polynomial for the music shooter, which is a ton. It's it's a it's a it's a space shooter, sure. but it's also casual at the same mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. Hacker Evolution, if you want to hack firewalls as a hacker and things like that. X3 Reunion, if you want a, a really awesome space game, yeah. it's got a ton of potential. I'll tell you, it's 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 a little hard to get into, and it's menus within menus in this game. But I'm really impressed. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that we also had Killing Floor as the intense zombie shooter on the moon base, and then fast. Than light and cave story. Love it. And the Kickstarter projects and all that stuff are linked in the show and, notes. And most importantly, for my, someone as, such as myself, there's games for all levels of tension, uh, d- depending on where my attention span is. And yep. it can be anywhere in, on any given day. So that's great. I got some choices. Absolutely, man. Good stuff. All right. That's the Linux Action Show's look at some great games for Linux. <laughs> Brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. But before we get out of here, mm. thought maybe we'd cover some emails. Absolutely. And actually, we have a video message from Michael, and he's responding to uh, a little uh, a little snickering you and I did last episode on Fedora 19's code name. Uh oh. Hi. Uh oh. My name is Michael Tanel. I'm a website and graphic designer from Alabama, and I'm also a Linux enthusiast. This video is a response to the latest episode of the Linux Action Show, season 25, episode four in which you talked about the Lex release of Fedora 19. And this release will be called Schrodinger's Cat as the code name. Now I think that's an awesome code name, especially for Fedora. And let me explain. Uh, Schrodinger's Cat, if for those of you who don't know, is a thought experiment in physics that explains what a superposition is. And I'm not going to actually explain it because, well, I probably can't do it as well as the SciShow did with Hank explaining it very well. So click that annotation and see for yourself if you want. So, Schroeder's cat. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got bufferage. He was just about to give us the good stuff, too, about Schroeder's cat and how it's a Pandora box of awesome. Oh, and it also begs the question, did he actually freeze like this in real life and a little scrolly thing appeared next to him? Or does maybe. It, maybe, it's, not maybe, the, maybe it's not our video. Not the last time I watched yeah. it. Okay. So, Schrodinger's cat basically is a thought experiment to explain superpositions. In this experiment, you put a cat in a box, theoretically, you don't actually do this, you put a cat in a box. You also put a vial of poisonous gas in a box and a hammer and some radiation and let's say the radiation decays, or it doesn't decay. If it decays, then it will activate the hammer, which breaks the vial, which releases the gas, which kills the cat. If it doesn't decay, then nothing happens. The cat's perfectly fine. And let's say you know, the experiment is like an hour long. So once that hour ends, the box opens, you find out which, which happened. 
So, the idea is that during that hour, the cat can be thought of both alive and dead at the same time. So, when I saw that Schrodinger's cat is the name of the next Fedora release, it made me think that Fedora might be doing a rolling release. And if they are, that's awesome. And because they so, never open the box. Here's what I think. I'm going to cut him off there because he goes yeah. long. If but uh, Michael you know, also I, works yeah. on an open source project, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> well, and I got I we'll have to his video. admit that, and and, I, and this is going to sound a little uh, sarcastic, but I almost wondered if he was saying that you know that represents the fact that the Fedora project is both dead and alive. And he I, actually at the end yeah. of his video says he's not a big Fedora fan. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, you know, it's like I mean, just from a comical ha ha knee slap point of view, I thought. That's what he was saying. I was like, okay, I can get behind that. Uh, but I thought it was but so it was great. Very cool. It was very cool to have a video sent in. Yeah. And he did it great. He posted it to YouTube and then sent Fantastic. us the link, which is the best well, way to do it. It was clear. It was distraction-free. He yeah. was articulate. I yeah. mean, it was, it was a little it was long. Dy- it was a little long, it a little but long. it was dynamite. He was yeah. thorough. I give him points for thorough. A so, couple cool. of quick uh, follow-ups from last week's episode, and then we're going to get out of here, Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, ultimate PC feedback. Do you remember last week we had somebody email in saying he wanted to run a whole bunch of screens? Yes. And he was wondering oh, yeah. what people recommend. Yep, yep, yep. Well, uh, in the Bodylicious review Bodylicious. thread that we did, uh, Q5Sys pointed out mm. that he currently runs five 1920 Whoa. by 1080 screens on his Linux box. Wow. And uh, he included a uh, screenshot of the unlimited real estate that he has. Oh, man, I'm so jealous. God, That's that crazy. is so Wouldn't cool. would be cool? You talk about like a command center, right? Just that background image must be multiple, multiple megabytes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he used, big. he's also used four of uh, screens with two NVIDIA cards wow. in SLI. So wow. he's got, he's got the details there. So uh, hmm. hopefully uh, our, uh, our, hopefully that'll help you out if you're trying to do uh, yeah. rock a whole bunch of screens. Cause that, I would like to hear more about some results on that. That's cool. And uh, one that. other thing, you remember we mentioned uh, VLC for Android yeah. and how uh, there wasn't a version for the Nexus seven in the play market. Yeah. Well, uh, Ninja Jaren or Ninja Aaron says that uh, you can actually get uh, Nightly's of uh, the Nexus Seven. You just have to sideload. Oh. Okay. Also, he wanted to give me a hard time because I did misspeak last episode. We I called uh, I called uh, X uh, X a window manager just because I was pooping from the mouth. It's a display server, obviously. I did kind of correct myself later, but I just wanted to make that. We're proud of each other when we get each other's names correctly. So I'm yeah. just saying we got to give us a break here. We do a lot of talking in we one do a episode. Lot of talking. <laughs> All right, Matt. So, uh, look, uh, that's it for this week's episode. It was a yep. big show. Big show. Lots of games we didn't cover. So, mm-hmm. guys, we want your ideas and your feedback. So you can leave comments in our subreddit. We'll have a feedback thread for mm-hmm. this episode. Or you can email the show, linuxactionshow at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Or you can pop that contact link Woo. at the top of the Jupiter Broadcasting website and select the Linux Action Show. Matt. Yes. What are you up to this week? By golly, I'm still available at, or available, I'm still working on uh, stuff at datamation.com. Scroll down to the open source link and clicky clicky. You and went, Sherry, you decided Sherry. to go for it this week. I did go for it. Yeah, I, <laughs> man, did this ever get viral. Um, yeah, I basically took uh, OS X uh, Mountain Lion and 1210 and I was brutally honest. Head to head. As a Head to head. As a Linux user and an enthusiast, I was brutally honest throughout the entire review. It's worth reading. Uh, coming up here, um, my next one is going to be a what if scenario if there was a rolling release with Ubuntu. And I how know would that what, work out? How it would work out in theory, because obviously that's not happening. But if it was, what would that look like? So, And of course, you can always find me at matthartley.com and uh, bug me there. And uh, Twitter. And Twitter. And I'm on Twitter and I'm on Google Plus yep. and all yep. sorts of stuff. We have links to those in the show Yeesh. notes to both our profiles. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I want to give a quick plug for this week's episode of Unfilter. I haven't much mentioned yeah. the Unfilter show recently. We just did 34. Uh, we had a sort of a follow up story where there's been more information about Aaron Swartz. Uh, and yeah. if people are, have been uh, interested in that story, I want to recommend you check that out. Also, Definitely. Fraudulent Food and the Secrets of Fast Food, and then also uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, last uh, big showdown in the uh, Senate and the House. We covered all of those in episode 30. And I thought it turned out really well. It's a long episode, but tons of good information. We get a lot of good feedback. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't checked out the Unfilter program or you haven't checked it out for a while, go see what you're missing. There's a lot of good stuff in there. It's a, it's it a really good show. All right, Matt. Well, that's I- it. Just a reminder, we're live Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv. Mm-hmm. You can join our chat room like these fine folks did and tell us uh, how we're... Uh, kinda, oh, and you can see our shenanigans uh, in between uh, shots, too. I mean, we're, we're crazy. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, let me yeah. tell you. Yeah. Well, we played extra content. <laughs> we did. There Stuff was, that we could not put in the that's show. That's right. Because of... We'd probably get pulled off YouTube. Probably. <laughs> probably would. So it's good. So you want to check out all the stuff we're doing, uh, make sure to join us. We'll join us live on Sundays at 10 a.m. over at jblive.tv. Yes. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for tuning in this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. We'll see you right back here next week. Crap.
crisp bacon is not overrated. <laughs> should we? What do you say? Uh, now that the show is super, super, super long, we do more show. <laughs> too long. We should do TLDT. Too long. <laughs> did not title. There you go. Too long. Did not title. Just watch the damn show. All right, here we go, Matt. Here we go. It is uh, the Linux action show for GNU slash Linux in three, in eight, and welcome. to the